Good morning class. Uh, welcome to the lecture series. Today I'll be discussing on how you would uh, analyze tone, especially in context of Indian languages. So today in details we will be looking into the experimental methodology, what are the acoustic components you need to focus upon and how would you normalize with data. So let us begin. So as you can see the title of today's talk is analysis of tone, experimental methods, acoustic components and data normalization. Let us start. Uh, we know that when you change one of the phoneme your lexical meaning would be changed. So, take a, let us take examples of Bangla words kal, khal and gal. Here we are changing the onset consonant ko, kh and ga and we have three distinct meaning. Similarly, if you change the vowel kal and kil, tomorrow and a feast, again just changing the vowel gives us a new words. However, this is not the case with Kogboro. So, you have three different words uh, soy, soy and soy. Let us hear the sounds soy. meaning correct, soy. meaning to tolerate soy. and meaning true. So, what do you see there? It is the exploitation of F0 that brings distinction in meaning. So, what is tone? This is the pitch of a word of a tone language that is the pitch of a word of a tone language that can change the lexical meaning. Second point is very important, tones may arise from a toneless state that is to say if you lose one of the segmental property say for example the distinction between boyest and boyestless uh, of students, you may have tone uh, in the course of historical development of the language or a language thus may acquire or lose lexical tone due to aerial effect. So, for example, we can take the example of uh, Devri, which is a Tibeti Burman language spoken in Assam, which is at the verge of losing tone at this stage due to uh, influence of Assamese in the uh, lexicon. So, the definition of tone, a language with tone is one in which an indication of pitch enters into the lexical realization of at least some morphemes, quoting Hyman and if. So, we can discuss tone in terms of fundamental frequency and pitch. So, what is F0? F0 refers to signal that is the number of pulses per second that a signal contains where each pulse is produced by a single vibration of vocal cord. Now, how is it measured? Fundamental frequency is measured in terms of hertz. 1 hertz is 1 cycle per second. Therefore, pitch is the perceived F0. That is the way a hearer perceives a signal, whether it is heard as high or low in terms of pitch. So, F0 is the physical property which is absolute, you can measure it and pitch is the relative uh, thing, you actually feel it, you can you know perceive it, right. So, both uh, I mean for intonation or tonal analysis, we exploit F0 related information. What is tonogenesis? Tonogenesis is the birth or rise of the tonal contrast. The loss of words in contrast in obstruents that is boyest and boyestless obstruents if at certain point of time a language neutralizes uh, the boyest boyestless distinctions then you may like to have a uh, tone to compensate that loss. Boyest obstruent generally lowers the pitch of the following vowel whereas boisterous of students may raise it. Let us test your ear. There are four sounds. Try to uh, transcribe these sounds after listening to this. I will repeat these things two times for each sound. Again. 
Please transcribe those. Again, and the fourth one, I hope you have transcribed this. Now check the actual uh, transcription. First one is wa, second one mikin, third one mizi, and the fourth one muzi. There is the difference in terms of F0. Let us listen to this again and okay. Let us move to the next slide. So, when you uh, start analyzing tone, what are the things you need to consider? You must test your own data. That is to say, uh, there might be some sort of uh, description, descriptive studies that like you know mentions about the presence or absence of tone in a given language. However, you need to check your own data. So, what are the things you need to check? That is the acoustic properties of phonemes, especially the vowels uh, which may vary slightly. That is to say, generally tone is located in the vowel or the rhyme portions. It is not that consonant do not carry tone. There are languages uh, where I mean even consonants may carry tone, but in most of the cases it is the vowel or the voiced portion that is the rhyme, vowel plus any sonorous coda can uh, give you the clue about F0 distinction. You must consider a noise free data. So what do you need to do? How would you get noise free data? Of course in the field you may not have lab like situation. So, there would be disturbances in the surrounding areas. So, what you can do is that you can use one unidirectional microphone. So, unidirectional and head on. If it is head on, your microphone would be fixed there. So, even if you move your um, like you know face, the subject, even if the subject moves his or her face, you know there won't be any distraction in terms of recording the actual voice. Second thing is that because it is unidirectional, even if there is like you know little uh, noise at the background, it may actually stuff track those noise, right. So most of the times what people do actually they focus more on the recorder instead of the microphone. Remember you can even use your prat, the software prat that is like you know it has got inbuilt recording capabilities. You just need to connect your unidirectional microphone with your laptop and you can start recording. So, microphone is more important, recorder is secondary. It is better if you have a recorder. And then you must have a well designed data set. Now, what do I mean by well designed data set? Say for example, when you talk about or anal start analyzing tonal languages, you must have few likely homophonous set. Remember I am saying likely homophonous, that is to say these are not actually homophonous. But this sound, these words actually vary in terms of pitch distinctions. You need to remember that you know when you design your data set, the likely homophonous pairs should not and must not come in quick succession. Suppose you are providing them the uh, data. So as I uh, showed you, muzi and muzi, right? These two words might not come in quick succession. You may insert something else in between. Otherwise, subjects may get confused, right? Remember, your subjects do not understand what is tone actually. They understand it in the terms that this sounds uh, differently, slightly differently. These words are pronounced slightly differently. But then this, that is like F0 distinction, this is the, this information they do not understand, right? So, this is what I meant by well designed data set. Next, you have to consider context and environment. That is to say, uh, as I said already, you have to randomize your uh, like you know target tokens. So you have suppose 20 pairs, 20 pairs having two way distinctions. You should not like you know give the pairs in such a way that you know uh, words having two different meanings, but then they are distinguished in terms of, in terms of tone should not occur in quick succession. In between there might be something else. So, this is one thing you need to remember. Then the next important point whether you should use a fixed sentence frame or isolation. 
what do I mean by that? Fixed sentence frame means you may actually use one fixed sentence uh, frame like I X said. X is the target word, right? X is the target word, and then you can also ask them to pronounce the same word in isolation. Why do I need to use fixed sentence frame? Because fixed sentence frame will take care of say uh, sentence boundary level enough or international uh, problem and then also in the fixed sentence frame you will have a kind of universal uh, an ideal you know situation for recording each of the word. The next important point is deciding your subjects who can be your subjects you know who can come forward to give you data. When you go to field you know you really need to persuade your subjects in such a way that they are not biased. First of all, they should not be biased. Second, you cannot select someone, you know, very young and very old. They might have some sort of, like, you know, physiological uh, problem, right? Subjects might not suffer from uh, hearing, uh, like, you know, disorder or at any point of time they had some sort of, like, you know, hearing problem, stuttering problem those things you need to consider. Also at the same time when you are recording the subject must not suffer from say cold effect. Then there would be a lot of nasalization which may even affect you know the way tone is realized right. So what should be your ideal subject? You should vary the age of the subject. Say you can take like you know younger generation. What do I mean by younger generation? Say for example 16 years to 25 years of age. You can go for like you know middle to old age people. 40, 45 to say 50, 55 years of age. You can, you should also take data from both male and female genders. Okay. Next point is recording procedure. How it should you, uh, how you should record? As I said, you should, you should always randomize your data. Then you should actually give them a pilot study. Pilot study means, you know, you should make them understand what you actually, uh, what you are actually looking forward, right? Now, subjects should not like you know utter these sentences as if they are reading from something. Rather, they should speak as if they are like you know talking normally. So, normal intonation pattern must be maintained. Of course, you can display your data on a computer screen, right? So, they can read from those, but then it should not be just like you know they are acting. That should be natural, right? And Priming sentence, what do I mean by priming sentence? Priming sentence is to say trigger that particular meaning. Suppose ba in a given language means cow. So I should actually trigger ba meaning cow because there is another ba, okay, ba, cow, ba, say rice. So one is with high tone, second one is with low tone. So now because I wanted to trigger ba with, you know, the meaning cow, I can give an example sentence. I have uh, there is a cow, suppose, there is a cow, right? Now, ba, that meaning would be activated, followed by your fixed sentence frame, I said cow. So, in a, in most of the Indian context, you see, your verb would come at the end, right? So, it would be I, cow, said, right? And then you can take, you know, the word in isolation, ba, as in cow, right? So, next ba, which is rise, should not come in quick succession. You might enter like you know insert few other words and after some time you may give the next ba meaning rise, right? Repetition is very important. Repetition is very important because you need to see, you need to actually analyze and understand whether they are maintaining kind of universal uh, pitch range, right? Also repetition is important because you may like to check statistical differences in terms of absolute variations. Pause, pause because there should be like you know educate pause in between say two different tokens. If it is like you know in, in kind of running speech then you will have problem in segmentation. If there is any sort of hesitation, subject starts from starting point like you know uh, like not very conscious and all, you should stop the recording. And you may also consider inserting few artifacts, right. So that will actually also help you in randomizing your data. Now acoustic analysis of F0. So your recording is done, you have recorded and all. Now what to consider? How would you, how you should measure your pitch? What do you consider? 
Also, next question is does measuring pitch at every 10 percent, I said 10 percent, okay, of the total duration of each TBU, TBU means tone bearing unit or say rhyme, will that help? You know, these are the questions we need to uh, answer. What should be the ideal range? Uh, ideal range, see, uh, for analysis of F0, analysis of tone, I generally prefer uh, using Pratt, that is a uh, free software available, it is a program actually, you can download it uh, from internet, you know. Uh, so, that is like, you know, very user friendly. There are various others like, you know, uh, programs and softwares which can be used, but I personally prefer to use Pratt. So, in Pratt, you can see there is a default pitch range like, you know, 75 to 500, something like that, 75 hertz to 500 hertz. Right? I actually try to uh, customize it because you know often you may encounter male subjects who will have say lower F0 range. So, I generally keep it as 40 hertz to 450 hertz. You can actually vary it according to your need and at default time step of uh, 10 milliseconds. So, the time step is actually default which is like you know 10 milliseconds which is good enough. Uh, what are the things you can consider? I said, does measuring uh, pitch help? What should you consider? Of course, you can consider various points. So, these are the extreme points. Say, average F0 of the total rhyme, maximum F0, minimum F0, F0 at the vowel midpoint. Remember, F0 at the vowel midpoint is not your 50 percent, may not be your 50 percent because your, like, you know, total rhyme may contain vowel plus any sonorous coda, right? So, vowel midpoint is the midpoint of the vowel actually and duration and intensity. Now, uh, why duration and intensity? As I say, as we have already discussed that you know, it is the pitch that distinguish or that determines the F0, uh, sorry, uh, tone distinctions. Duration you need to consider because if, if there is like you know, durational differences, then you may actually uh, speculate there might be some another proper, other properties also. That is to say, you may have distinction, uh, distinctions between say uh, short and long vowels, right, E and E, right. So, ideally the differences in terms of duration should not be significant enough, okay. This is the area I am considering, right, why? So, in Pratt you can see a blue line, you know, that would actually uh, signal your like you know pitch area. So, this is the blue line I am talking about, right. So, you can see easily this is possibly the vowel, right and this portion is the uh, like you know uh, sonorous consonant, right. You can see the formants and all. Now, this is an example from a uh, variety, uh, variety, variety considered, I mean a language considered to be a variety of Bangla, standard Bangla, the word is gai. So, actually it is not the consonant, it is the next vowel E. So, this is A, this is E, right. So, uh, this is the portion we, we will consider to understand the distinction in terms of F0, okay. Now, let us consider some examples from some of the languages, okay. This is Imchungar. Imchungar is a Naga language spoken in the border of Nagaland and Manipur, right. So, you can see uh, here I have data from 8 different speakers. F means female speaker, M means male speaker, S1, this is subject 1, subject 2, subject 3, likewise subject 8, right. So, these are like you know two different words, zium and zium. So, zium with high tone means no, this is a negation, negative marker. Zium with a low tone is drink. How do I know this is low? You check the F0. So, this is for which speaker? Of course, it has to be a female speaker say for example, you see L, S5 that is a female uh, speaker. How do I know it is a female speaker? Because you see the F0 range is pretty high. Why F0 range is pretty high for the female speaker? Because the size of the vocal cord for the female speakers are usually smaller, right. So, that is why they have like you know more F0 uh, range. For the male speakers, if it is a grown up adult male speaker, you will have like you know light, you know less F0 range, 
right? So this is important, this point is important, I will again get back to this point. So we can see, no, no, zoom meaning no is realized with around 280, 280 hertz and zoom drink for this speaker is realized around 250 F0 range, right? So clearly showing there is a high and low distinctions, right? Same, this is for another uh, female speaker F3, sorry F S3. Uh, similarly here also you can see like you know who, wherever you have female speakers you have like you know higher F0 range. So what we can check here is that in case of your nun, nun right is high tone, nun uh, low tone mean, meaning mawud you see no F0 distinction as are carefully I mean observed here. Here I have measured the F0 in every 20%. So what I did actually, I, I actually uh, kind of segmented my tokens in this way. Then I wrote a Pratt script, try to divide this portion into 11 equidistance part. That is at every 10 percentage, right? Then the values, I, I got the values, right? So those values were again redrawn using a spreadsheet. So here you can see like you know this language has at least three lexical tones. So ta if you if you focus on ta series you will see like you know ta with low tone meaning divorce, ta with mid tone meaning rise, ta with high tone meaning pill. Again there are four different subjects two female two male and you can see like you know the distinction is well maintained. Same thing you can observe even in the G series. G meaning match, sleep and soon. So with three distinguished lexical uh, tone that is absolute variances, right? So what you can observe that I have written non-normalized, okay? Focus on these words non-normalized that is to say I haven't, I haven't normalized these things. So each speaker actually produce each of the tokens say four or five times. Here what you are seeing is the average of those 4 and 5 repetitions for each of the token. So suppose here are 4 like you know, uh, like you know words spoken by 4 different subjects, each of the token contains 5 repetitions. So all together there are how many? 3 weird distinctions, right? 3 weird distinctions, 4 speakers that is 12 into 5. So 5 into 12, how many? 60 tokens have been considered here. So in these diagrams we have 60 tokens, right? Same thing here as well. Now here is another uh, example from Cockborough. Now focus uh, on this like you know left hand panel and the right hand panel. Here this is the average of all the speakers together, right? Here is it is subject wise. Now if you see the average, of course this is a different word, this is Yog series, this is the Bangla series, Bangla meaning change and earthquake, but then here you just try to observe the differences. When I have considered the averages of all the four speakers, right, you can see, you see the first syllable is realized with a huge F0 differences, that is not much in case of the second syllable. Um, when you consider the averages, you can see like you know clear distinctions between high and low tone. Of course, again it is from uh, Cockborough language, right? So the difference is around say 20, 25 hertz. This is another example from uh, Rushu. Rushu uh, is a language spoken in Arunachal Pradesh, right? Uh, so it has got also three distinct tones. When I consider the averages, you see when it has three tonal distinctions, you always speculate whether there is really like these differences are really significant enough or not. Now the problem is, you see here I am considering average p track. Of course, these are non-normalized, but then I am taking it like you know average. That is, there might be so there are eight subjects. I am considering all the iterations produced by all the subjects together, and then I am showing the average here. In others like you know figures, what we were showing uh, here for example, I was showing it speaker wise. Speaker wise we can see you know, each of the speakers maintain uh, say distinct pitch pattern, but here 
uh, we actually do not know from these figures whether each figures maintain distinct absolute differences or not. If at all they maintain, then you know how much was the range for each of the speaker, right? So that is the problem. Now, uh, so this is the these are the data from Rushu, another you know Tibetan uh, Burma languages. Now, problem I say like you know is there a problem? Of course, there is a problem. Remember, I say like you know females generally have higher F0 range. So you can see like you know this uh, like you know word and then this word. Of course, these are produced by female speaker. So this one, this one, if you if you check, is produced by S9, which is a female speaker, right? And this is by S5 uh, again, which is a female speaker. So if you compare, you see the low tone, the low tone of S9, which is a female speaker, is produced with much higher F0 than the male speakers. This is the problem I am trying to talk about. So, if you take average, you may have like you know default representation, you may have some sort of problem, same thing you can observe there. The low tones of the female speakers are produced with higher F0 than the, than all the male like you know speakers higher F0, right. So, this is the problem we need to consider. I, I mentioned that you know the problem is females like you know low tone might be realized as higher than the male speaker's high tone. That is the absolute range I am talking in terms of right. So we need to normalize the data. So uh, I told you like you know the difference between male and female speakers absolute range is kind of problematic in the sense that if you take the average of all the speakers together then you may have kind of you know uh, kind of faulty data right. So we need to normalize the data. Why this faulty data? As I said, the size of the vocal cord, you know, for male and female would differ definitely, right? That's why even the F0 range would also be like, you know, different for male and female speakers. So there are various normalization technique. Uh, I generally uh, prefer personally like, you know, G-school normalization. G-school normalization, of course, it is proposed by Rose, uh, like, you know, kind of proposed G-school normalization. So how do you normalize it? Z that is Z is equal to F0 E. What is E? E is the point that you are considering. Suppose like you know I have got data at every 10 percent. So, 0 percent the starting point is my starting point. So, E could be 0 percent, 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent whatever range it is minus X. What is the X? X is the average F0 of that particular person. Now, suppose speak subject 1 he or she must have produced all the words, right? So, I can take the average of all the words, right? Average of all the words that would include both the high tone words and the low tone words and all the repetitions as well, as well as like you know the F0 is actually divided into different ranges, right? 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent, 40 percent. So, you can consider everything together and get the average. Similarly, you can also get the standard deviation, SD is standard deviation. So, X is the average and you can divide it with the standard deviation value, right? What will happen actually? You can actually minimize the F0 deviations between the male and female speakers or between all the speakers. Even within say male speakers, their F0 range would be different. When the females within female, their F0 range may be different because of like you know size of the uh, like you know vocal cord, right. So, you can actually normalize your data using G-score normalization procedure, right. So, the G-score values can be averaged as I have averaged for all the 11 consecutive points, right. And you can again replot uh, the same thing like you know using the same uh, spreadsheet, right. So, here is the thing. So, earlier I, I said you know the difference is in terms of high and low tone, right. So, you see the range is now 2 to minus 2, plus 2 to minus 2, you know 0 is my normalization point. You see the low tone is not crossing the negative uh, like you know uh, boundary, it is not going over there, right. So, I can clearly say that you know this is high tone, this is low tone. So, 1 meaning pretend. Uh, is realized with the high tone 1 
meaning tie is realized with a low tone. Same thing, duck, duck, insulati meaning drum is realized with high tone, duck meaning row is realized with a low tone, right? So these are the normalized data. Uh, there is slight like you know thing, uh, I mean a few uh, more things you need to consider actually. Now you see if you consider the Cockbrook data, uh, you know, thung, uh, sorry, Tang and Tui series, Tang series and Tui series, you can see you know the differences, it is like you know huge. So I can, what I can see is that you know this is a low tone, it is like realized with the negative values, these are realized with the positive values, so high tone, right? Same thing is happening here. So I can say there are like you know uh, say two tones in Kakborak, but I have also this series, right, where you have going up and coming down slightly. So should we also speculate that there might be two more tones, high low and then there are like you know rising and falling tone, possibly yes, possibly no, we need to check you know more data and more number of utterances. Now this is a series with three way distinctions. I can clearly see okay when I consider the uh, normalized data, normalized average data I can kind of safely say possibly there are three tones, say this is a low tone, this is a high tone and this is kind of a rising tone. So it is like you know high rising, mid rising and possibly a falling tone here, right? No problem with both the words, so yak series and soy series. So based on this like you know information I can say there are possibly not two, possibly three tones in Kakbarok, right? However, if we consider now this series, three and sa series, here I encounter a problem. What is the problem? You can see these two like you know ranges and then these three like you know words. Remember Kakbarok, you know many researchers have reported uh, that Kakbarok is losing tone right or they might not have tone at all and then some speak, uh, uh, researchers also reported that then there are four tones. So this is the data from the uh, like you know from South Tripura like you know uh, region. So I have recorded this data from Shabrum, uh, Bilonia, these are the you know, extreme southern part of Tripura, Kokborok is of course spoken in Tripura. So they are the maintain this tonal distinctions. Right, I, I have like an encounter. So at least three tones we are sure about from this like you know uh, figures. However, when I consider these figures, when I have like you know four-way lexical meaning distinctions, see for example, sir meaning one, meaning pain, meaning sun, meaning speak. There, the subjects, all the subjects are confused, and then they actually end up producing possibly only two distinct tones. So this is the thing you need to consider. You know. Uh, whether there are two tones or three tones or four tones, possibly it is uh, safe to say that Kakborak may distinguish three way like you know uh, tonal contrast, right? These are the brief references, thank you.